Historical Society here, and today we have the honor of speaking with Justin Sliziri from the Burroughs Garrett in Newberry, Vermont. Justin is world-renowned for his handcrafted reproduction historic textiles, which he makes on 18th and 19th century looms. Justin, could you talk to us today about your process and what inspires you and how you make these amazing reproductions? I've been making um, a wide range of reproduction textiles for several years now. Um, a lot of those have been very um, sort of basic, simple things, lots and lots of you know, plain weave linen or checked um, fabrics, blankets, that sort of thing, towels, um, upholstery fabric. But lately though, the last few months, uh, I've recently gotten some equipment that now allows me to weave um, what's called a figured fabric. So instead of just relying on simple geometric forms to create a design, um, I can now get into some of the more sort of ornate patterning. And this particular loom was set up for weaving uh, figured coverlets of a type that became very popular in the early 19th century. Um, they're about 1850 or so uh, in this country. Um, lately with these coverlets, I've actually uh, sort of been making an adaptation. Um, you can get a full version, you know, the full sized version for your bed, or you could get um, a small quarter size coverlet. Um, these actually were woven historically, both as samples and um, as sort of child's or crib coverlets. There are kind of two pieces of equipment here. There's a, um, a historic loom, which is this large sort of boxy um, timber frame structure underneath. Um, but on top of that is the really special piece. Um, that's a jacquard uh, head or jacquard machine that was built about 1860 in Scotland. Um, it is one of the oldest, if not the oldest, um, operating jacquard mechanism in private hands in North America actually. Um, and this is a device that reads punch cards for creating the figured woven patterns in the fabric. Um, it's the same technology that later on was adapted and used for the earliest computers. It makes sense to put on a great big long warp and the warp is all the yarn that goes on the loom itself. So if you look on the loom there's a big roll in the back here and that's where all of the yarn is stored that is gonna run the entire length of the piece of fabric. Um, so that warp then uh, continues sort of through the harness in the middle of the loom, which is what that card mechanism controls to raise and lower threads, and, um, and then gets wrapped around as it's woven into cloth um, down below. There's another beam where it sort of gets stored. Um, so, so it might take a couple days just to get that part set up. Um, the other component with these coverlets is the actual um, designing itself uh, and creation of the punch cards. And that process takes uh, me, uh, 40 hours or so to create what's called the point paper. Uh, essentially, I just draw the entire pattern out on graph paper. And then about another 40 hours to punch each individual card um, and then lace those together to prepare that part for the machine. Uh, each of the rows of the design in the woven fabric are um, transferred to one of those punch cards. So each card contains all the information to weave that one row. So in the case of the latest coverlet design that I'm working on, there are uh, about 220 cards in that design. The combination, once that's uh, ready to go um, and it's on the loom, the actual weaving itself goes fairly quickly because uh, the weft yarns that uh, I'm interlacing with that warp by using a shuttle, uh, those yarns are fairly heavy um, for this design. So that part actually doesn't take nearly as long as it could if they were very, very fine. I can weave a coverlet in a, a few days. Um, in order to understand how this loom works, um, we're going to actually kind of climb up there and look at the jacquard machine in just a second and show you that uh, coming down off of that machine um, is a series of uh, what are called leashes or these harness cords. Uh, each one of these cords here that comes down from the machine is connected to uh, what's called a heddle. Um, or a male in the back. Um, it's like a little loop of cord. And in that uh, loop uh, down here, there's sort of an eye that the warp threads go through. Um, so one of these leashes, in the case of my loom, the way this is set up, uh, controls two of the uh, ends of the warp, the, the warp yarns there. The, uh, the top of that leash, the other end of it, where it goes up into the machine, goes on to a metal hook. Uh, Jacquard, Machines are um, 
you know, talked about and sort of ranked uh, by the number of hooks that they had in them. This particular one is a 500 hook uh, jacquard head, which means that there are 500 of those individual hooks. Here, this is one of those hooks, of which there are those 500. So they're all set up uh, running vertically throughout the whole um, device. They are controlled by a horizontal um, piece called a cross wire. And the end of that cross wire sticks out of the needle board here. The opposite end of that has a spring on it. And so if I push that cross wire, it actually pushes that hook uh, backward. So when the machine is closed, when this top piece is down and lowered, all of those hooks are sitting just over a um, metal bar called a knife. Uh, pardon me, if and the it, needle gets pushed and the cross wire moves the hook, it will push it away from the knife. If it doesn't move and stays in place, that hook sits right over the knife and when the griff, the knife, lifts back up, it'll actually pick up that hook. So the punch cards um, are all set so that um, any of the hooks that need to be raised We'll have a, there'll be a hole punched in the space for that needle. So the hook stays put when the card um, is pressed against the needle board. And then when the knife goes up, it'll pick up that hook. If the card is solid, it pushes that needle backward, pushes the hook off of the knife, and it stays stationary. This uh, is a design that is based on one woven by a guy named John Campbell, who um, was originally from Scotland and then moved to uh, New York, and then later to Canada, where he wove for um, decades, and he wove uh, four different figured coverlet designs, and one of them was uh, a design he called Rose and Stars, and so there are um, four roses and a um, large star motif that creates the center field of the design, and then the outside edge is made up of uh, willow trees and eagles, um, and then there's a second uh, more um, abstract border made with these sort of swags and um, abstract flowers. And what I find really interesting about it is that he did most of his weaving in Canada and sold these coverlets to Canadian clients, but this design especially um, is filled with American um, images. So this technology allowed uh, professional hand weavers who were starting to have to compete in the 19th century with a lot of factory-made goods. Um, it gave them something that was a little competitive. The older style geometric coverlets of the 18th century had become uh, kind of passe and um, not very fashionable anymore, but these um, highly sort of figured ornate designs uh, really kind of took over and it gave these guys a way to keep making a living. The well after machines um, should have put them out of business. Thank you so much for sharing um, this insight. And if you would like to learn yeah. more, be sure to visit theburrowsgarrett.com and newporthistory.org.